A jeweler's saw blade has no strength or structure of its own. It needs a jeweler's saw frame to make it usable. The saw frame is designed to stretch the blade into rigidity, make it easy to push and pull the blade up and down along its length, and make it easy to turn the blade within its own radius. Frames come in several depths, which limit how deeply you can cut into your metal. The shallower frames are more stable, rigid, and easy to control, but they limit you to working small. As the frames get deeper, they generally pick up a lot of flex, which makes it harder to get the proper tension on the blade. The center of gravity also shifts further away from the handle, which can make them feel clumsy. The 4-inch frames I supply for the class are a mid-size that provides plenty of depth for most tasks without introducing too much flexibility or compromising balance. We do, though, have a number of larger and smaller frames that you can use as needed. The saw is made up of several parts that you'll need to know when watching this video. The handle, the top chuck and hanger, the bottom chuck, and the adjustment screw at the back of the saw that lets you change the length of the saw frame. Some of our blades come in bundles of 12, wrapped with a thin wire to protect them during shipping. To unwrap the bundle, grab the end of the wire with your fingernail and pull it off. The thin wire will probably simply break when you do this, but if not, slip the end out from between the blades and unwrap the remaining wire almost all the way. Slip a blade from the loosened bundle and then loosely rewrap the bundle. A lot of the purpose of a jeweler's saw frame is to stretch the blade between the chucks so that as you press the blade into your metal, it can't just flex backward. The more flex you have to the blade, the more likely you are to break it, and the slower it will cut. To stretch the blade tight, we load the blade into the saw while leaning on it to flex the chucks closer together. When you stop leaning on the saw, the tension in the frame tries to relax back into its original position, but can't because of the saw blade. Think of it like an archery bow, where the string is slipped over the ends while it's bent, and then is kept from returning to its original position. Loosen the top and bottom chucks, and hook the frame over the edge of your bench by the hanger above the top chuck. Rest the end of the handle against your chest so your hands are free. The blade's teeth cut all in the same direction. We want to load it in the saw with the teeth pointing away from the frame and toward the handle. If the teeth are large enough, you'll be able to see which direction they're pointing. If not, run your finger gently over them. If you are stroking over the teeth's edges, they'll make a buzzing sensation in your fingerprint. If you're stroking against the teeth's edges, they'll want to grab and bite into it. Insert the top of the blade into the full length of the top chuck and aim the other end at the bottom chuck. Tighten the top chuck very firmly, but just with your fingers. Loosen the thumb screw at the back of the frame and adjust the length so the blade just barely reaches the bottom chuck or is even a little shy of it. Retighten the thumb screw. Grab the saw's handle with your left hand and lean into it to compress the frame until the loose end of the blade goes all the way to the handle end of the bottom chuck. With it still compressed, slip the bottom of the blade into the bottom chuck and tighten it firmly. Ease off the saw. Check the tension by plucking the blade with your fingernail. It should make a high-pitched ping. If not, release the bottom chuck, lengthen your frame a little, and repeat the process of compressing the frame and tightening the bottom chuck. Good sawing means getting the saw to efficiently go where you want it to while breaking as few blades as possible. 90% of this is body mechanics, how you sit and how you hold and move the saw and metal. Start by sitting up straight with both feet on the floor and adjust the height of your chair so that the center of your shoulder joint lines up with the bench pin. It is easiest to lower these chairs by kneeling on the center of the seat while pulling up on the lever. Adjust the back of the chair to help you sit up straight and support your back. Instead of centering your body on the bench pin, shift your body to the left if you're right-handed so that your wrist is at a more natural angle while you're sawing. Sawing is a two-handed job and they have very different jobs. Your smart hand is your sawing hand. Its job is to make the saw go up and down using varying amounts of forward pressure on the downstroke and controlling the tilt and rotation of the frame. The blade needs to stay vertical as you saw. This is easiest if you grip the narrow part of the handle mostly with your thumb and first finger. Use your ring and middle finger just for control, but don't grip tight with them. If you grip tight with your bottom three fingers, you'll make a chopping motion with the saw and break a lot of blades. Try to keep your thumb to the side of the handle instead of behind it. Otherwise, you'll tend to tilt the saw forward and break a lot of blades. 
Your dumb hand is your gripping hand. The saw cuts on the downstroke and the bench pin supports the metal as you cut. The job of your left hand is to keep the metal from popping up off the bench pin on the upstroke while maneuvering the metal to feed it into the blade. Find the best support, avoid cutting into the bench pin, and generally avoid being cut by the saw in the process. You can use any part of the bench pin that gives you the best support, but usually that'll be at the narrow end of the V-shaped opening or off the edge on the smart hand side. Your fingers should be on top and your thumb on the bottom. Use a pinching grip with your thumb whenever you can. You have a lot more strength in your grip than you do in your shoulder, which is what you're using if you're pressing the metal down against the bench pin instead of gripping it. You can bring your fingers in close to the blade or even in front of it if needed without a lot of risk. If it feels awkward, that might just be unavoidable for you to get a good grip. And it's probably temporary, but you can try rotating your hand or shifting your whole body off to the side to change the angle of your wrist. The saw will want to take the path of least resistance as you start a cut. So to start a cut, put your fingernail against the edge of the sheet where you want to start. Then using your nail to keep the saw aligned, make a few upstrokes with the saw to wear a notch in the edge of your sheet. The saw doesn't really cut on the upstroke, but it will be enough to keep the saw from skittering sideways when you make your first downstroke. Use long, easy strokes. There are over three inches of teeth on the blade. Use all of them. Long, easy strokes keep your sawing arm and hand relaxed and help you maintain good body mechanics. The saw cuts one stroke at a time and it only cuts on the down stroke. It can only turn if it's cutting. You'll only need as much forward pressure on the saw as you can control for the shape of the cut you're making with that single stroke. Ease off the forward pressure on the up stroke. Straight lines let you use more forward pressure on the saw without losing control. The more curved a line is, the less forward pressure you can use until a tight switchback or corner may require no forward pressure at all. If you need to stop sawing temporarily, you can pull down until the top chuck rests on your metal and let the frame hang from the bench pin. Or you can set it up on the bench. But don't try this with the metal in the middle of the blade, it will most likely break it. You can also saw backwards out of the cut. You can't just pull the blade out of the cut, it'll break. If you're in the middle of a cut that you can't just saw backwards conveniently out of and you need to stop, you can pull to the top chuck, release the blade from the bottom chuck, and pull the blade up and out.